The way you do that is with an Allen key. They are standard size Allen keys that you can find from any hardware shop. So all you have to do is get an Allen key and you have to unscrew these six bolts using the Allen key. When you unscrew them, it's important that you don't unscrew one fully and the second fully then the third fully because it will create a kind of imbalance in the darbuka and it may damage um, the darbuka. So you don't want to do that. You want to instead unscrew maybe two turns. So two full turns, one and then two across each of these screws all the way until they are no longer attached to the head. I'm going to do one round with you guys and then I'm going to leave you guys to continue and finish off taking these screws and we're going to meet again after all of these screws have been taken out. So we're going to get the, the Allen key in there and we're going to do one turn, a second turn. That's one. We're going to do one turn, a second turn. One, two. One, Two, that's the third. One, two, that's the fourth. One, two, fifth. And the last one, one, two. So I want you guys to go away and keep doing that all the way around until we have removed all six of these screws and then we'll look at the next step. Okay, fantastic. Now. We've got these screws off. Now we just take these screws out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we put them to the side. Don't lose these, these are very important. Okay, now removing this head. Normally, if it's a good quality drum, the head should just come off like such. You should be able to pull it and this head will come off. Sometimes, um, especially low quality Egyptian drums, um, that you find on the streets of Cairo, um, you'll find that they glue this section down to the body. If they do that, you're going to need a screwdriver, uh, a flathead screwdriver. You stick the screwdriver in here and you slowly push and pull um, and it should, it should come away. If there is glue, take the flathead screwdriver and put it around the, uh, the darbuka so that it kind of loosens up the glue and then you can pull it away. But in normal cases, this section should just come off. Next, we have to remove the plastic head, which is this section right here. When we remove the plastic head, all we normally have to do is pull it from the sides and it will come off. In this case, it should come off quite easily. It came off. If it's not coming off, if you're finding it difficult to get this plastic head off, you need two things. You need a cloth and you need a chisel as such a cloth and a chisel. Simply put the cloth over here on this metal section. So you put the cloth on the metal section, you put the chisel down on top of the cloth. The reason you put it on the cloth is to avoid damage to the drum and you chisel up, you turn around, you put the cloth down, you chisel up and it should come away as such. In this case, I didn't need to do that. I could have just lifted it away. But if it's particularly difficult to get yours off, just put a cloth down, get a chisel and chisel it off. Take the head off. Right, so now we're left with an empty body. It has uh, no skin on it and it has no head on it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a skin. Here's how we do that. We put the darbuka down. We grab a new skin. The skin I'm using in this case is a Remo fiber skin Clear tone DX uh, 22 centimeter skin. We place the skin on the darbuka head as such. So the skin should, if it's the right size, fit comfortably and easily onto the darbuka head. There should be no forcing, it shouldn't be too difficult to get it on, and it shouldn't move around. If it's the right size, it will fit properly. So we put the skin on the darbuka. Now we have to reattach the head. In order to reattach the head, we have to line up the markings of the head and the darbuka body. On the head, you will find markings. You'll find a red marking over here, or it might be a different color. In this case, it's a red marking. And on the darbuka body, you will find a similar red marking. The red marking on this body is over here. What we're going to do is we're going to fit the head to the body by lining up the red markings. So we line up this red marking with this red marking and we drop it down 
and fit it, push it down a little bit to get it in place and fit that onto the darbuka. Once that's on the darbuka, we're going to put the six screws back in. The way we do that is as follows. We take each of the six screws and we just put them in the hole. Once the screws are in the hole, we should be able, with our Allen key, to start tuning the darbuka. In order to do this, we're going to use one turn on each screw until the darbuka skin is flush with the darbuka head. So there's no, there's no imbalance. The darbuka skin is the same height as the darbuka head. So we're going to go ahead and use one turn with the Allen key on each of these screws to get this head flush with the skin. Now make sure that the screw has caught in the thread before you start turning, otherwise you'll just be turning uh, and not screwing anything in. So make sure the screw is caught and with one turn I want you to go around the darbuka head and screw each one in. I'm going to rejoin you guys once the darbuka skin is flush with the darbuka head. Okay, fantastic! We've now screwed in all of the screws and the head is now flush with the skin. The skin is now flush with the head. This gap around the darbuka should be even all the way around and if you run your finger through it, it should feel very very even and very very steady. Um, and that is a sign that the head is now fitted. Now the only thing left is to tune the darbuka. Now if I play this darbuka, it'll sound like this. It sounds pretty terrible in my opinion. And the reason that is, is because this Remo skin is too tight. So we've tightened the skin, but it's now a bit too tight. So what needs to happen now is we need to leave this darbuka um, to set. Now this step isn't absolutely necessary. Uh, it is recommended very much so to leave the darbuka to set for a day or two so that the skin becomes nice and, and, and relaxed, the molecules kind of loosen up a little bit so that you can tune it properly. If you tune it straight away, you run the risk of potentially having an issue um, with the tuning and the tuning not setting fully. So it's best to leave it for one or two days. In the case of this video, I'm going to tune it straight away so that I can prove to you guys that you don't have to leave it for that long. Although I strongly recommend doing so. It would be better for the darbuka, it would be better for the darbuka skin. Um, so do leave it for a couple of days. If you don't have time, if you're urgently changing a darbuka before a gig, you can still sort it out. The way we do that now is by tuning to the car. So the car, the car will definitely tell you if the darbuka is in tune or not. Because the car and the tack will sound the same. So if the car is right, the tack will be right. If the car is right, the doom will be right as well. Because the doom has a very wide range of being correct. Um, so the doom will almost certainly be right. So if we tune to the car, we'll be in business. We take our Allen key and we release maybe a quarter turn from each screw and play the car until the car gets to the desired level of play. Now I'm going to stay with you guys while we tune this so that you can hear my process of tuning it. So we're going to tune it by releasing a quarter turn on each of these screws. So one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's one. I still think that's too sharp. We're going to go for another round. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Hmm. It sounds a bit uneven to me. Let's play it.
think it needs a little bit more. So, uh, I think it needs to be a little bit tighter. I feel like it's a little bit too loose. So before I did a quarter turn release, now I'm gonna tighten by maybe an eighth turn. So instead of a quarter turn, I'm gonna tighten an eighth turn. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I think that sounds pretty damn good. Good, let's play it out a little bit. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty damn good. The sound will improve over time, but already you can start hearing that's a fantastic, fantastic sounding barbuka. Finally, let's look at FAQs, frequently asked questions about Darbuka skins, in general maintenance and general care tips. The first thing I will say is once you have put a new Darbuka skin on a Darbuka, do not expect it to sound perfect straight away. It will take some time for the skin to settle, for the skin to actually mold itself around the head of the Darbuka. Now think about it this way, when you buy, when you buy a leather good, like when you buy, when you buy some fine English shoes, yeah, that's a good example. Fine English shoes. They'll fit perfectly initially. But over time, they'll improve their fit. They'll mold around your foot. They'll uh, get, uh, get a bit more relaxed. The leather will become soft. And eventually, they'll feel amazing. Yeah, that's a good example. So uh, they're like, they're like fine, in, fine English shoes, right? So the Darbuka skin initially, I mean, it will fit. And it will work. It will sound like a Darbuka. But over time, it will naturally set into a more comfortable pattern and it will just sound better and better and better. Now, I'm not talking, you know, years. I'm talking, you know, a good, a good two or three weeks of playing it and playing it regularly and the Darbuka will start to sound really, really, really good. The second thing I would say is how to care for the Darbuka. Make sure that you don't expose it to direct sunlight. Uh, make sure you don't expose it to any heat sources. Don't leave it next to a radiator. Don't... Uh, don't leave it in your car if the, if the temperature outside is 35 degrees uh, Celsius. Because really what will happen is the Darbuka skin is made of plastic and plastic melts. And it's not, it's not a thick layer of plastic either, ladies and gentlemen. It's quite a thin layer of plastic. Um, so if you, if you leave, expose your Darbuka to a kind of extreme heat, it will melt. And when it melts, it will melt unevenly. So what will happen is... The parts that aren't exposed to sunlight, for example, so the inner parts, the parts that are uh, actually securing the Darbuka skin to the Darbuka's head, um, those parts are not exposed to sunlight, so they won't melt. But the part at the top that is exposed to sunlight, that will melt. And so you'll create an imbalance in the skin, and that's not good at all for, the, for a plastic skin. Um, so make sure that you don't expose it to sunlight. If you leave it in a car and the car is hot, you're gonna have the same effect. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna basically warm up, and it's gonna start melting, and it's just gonna sound, it's gonna sound rubbish. So don't do that. Don't leave the darbuka out like that. Another thing I would say is, buy a case for your darbuka. Um, don't, don't knock it around. If you knock it against something and you, you hit the skin, it will create a little dent in that skin. It'll, it'll create a hole in the, in the plastic. Not a hole, a little dent in the plastic skin. Uh, that's bad for the Darbuka sound. It means that when it vibrates, it won't vibrate evenly, and you want it to vibrate evenly to produce the best sound. So don't knock it against anything, and don't stick anything sharp through it. As I mentioned earlier on in this video, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen so many pictures of Darbukas with massive gaping holes in them, and it makes me sad inside. It makes everybody at Malik Instruments sad inside to see those pictures. Don't do that to your Darbuka. It's not, it's not nice. Just don't do it. So care for the Darbuka. Don't stick anything sharp through it. Don't knock it against anything. Buy a bag for it. Keep it safe. Um, if you do have a, if you have a Darbuka and you're taking it for a gig somewhere, typically I would recommend keeping a spare Darbuka, uh, a spare Darbuka skin and a tuning key nearby, just in case something happens and you do need to to retune it. Um, and that's another good point. Retuning it. 
So if your Darbuka skin goes out of tune, don't immediately try and change the head. Um, because it may be possible that you can fix that Darbuka skin just by fixing the tuning up a little bit. If it sounds like it has a buzz in it, it might be because the Darbuka is not perfectly even. The, the gap between the head and the body, as shown um, in the previous part of this video, if the gap between the head and the body is not perfectly even all the way around the Darbuka, then it may be that it's got a slight buzz in it. So if it gets a buzz in it, try and fix it that way. Try and, uh, try and tighten the screws a little bit to get rid of a buzz. If it sounds a bit, uh, if it sounds like it has a, a bell sound, it's sounding a bit low pitched, very belly, like a ding sound rather than a, sh a sharp striking sound, um, then try and tune it a bit. Try and tighten the screws, making sure that the gap is even all the way around, making sure the top is even and is flush. But try and tighten the screws, half turn each time, give it a go and see what happens. It may well fix your Darboka problem. Um, if that doesn't work, then by all means change the skin. Until next time everybody, take care.